I would say there are two pretty distinct reasons that the Adidas Cybersonic is worth its price tag. Actually, I would say three distinct reasons. However, you have to be that specific player to be able to really extract the playability out of these shoes and what they can offer. So let's get into them and find out if you're one of them. And a huge thanks, Tennis Point USA, for sending me a pair of the Cybersonics to check out. However, as always, all opinions are still my own. No one's seeing this video before you do. But if you do want to pick up a pair of these, I will leave links in the description below. All right, so the first thing about the Cybersonic, especially in the upper, is that just really hits you in the face as soon as you look at them is the silhouette reminds you of another shoe that has been really touted over the years and that is the adidas uber sonic 2. the silhouette and the shape of them and even the fit of them once we get into the fit section does remind me a lot of the twos it's just that they're a much more stout version of those shoes now number one the tongue on the cybersonics is super rugged it does have pretty decent padding all along it for staying pretty minimalist it also is gusseted at the bottom and it has elastic gussets at the bottom, which really suck your foot into the shoe, which really helps with containment. Number two, the lace eyelets are outriggers. That's the one thing I kind of wish they would have done different, that they would have been integrated because like I said, that is one point of failure in the shoe. However, they do go all the way down into the strobo board, which I do really like. And if you want to bypass those outrigger laces, you can just thread the shoelaces right through the holes that the outrigger lace eyelets go through. So if you want that more intimate lockdown on these, it's not hard to get. But what I think really sets apart the Cybersonics from other shoes in its class is the woven meshing in the uppers. Now, if you look at it, it is a two layer woven mesh. However, you get this textile weave on the top, but then as you move the shoe kind of under the microscope, you see what's hiding underneath it there, which is this TPU meshing underneath of it, this really webbed network underneath of it. Now that allows a little bit more expansion of your foot underneath of the shoe, while the uppers are a little bit more beefed up woven mesh that kind of keep more structural integrity to the shoe. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in there, just given the layering of it. And Another blink and you'll miss it feature of the Cybersonics is on the drag guard. Now this drag guard goes all the way from the midfoot all the way here into the toe guard. Now, when you touch it, it kind of feels like a sheen layer. However, when you look at it under the microscope, there's actually these micro air channels within each macro dimple of the drag guard. So when you're dragging and sliding on these, even though they aren't the really heavy, bulky urethane materials, the engineering of it is so good that it allows more airflow when you're sliding and thus a lower coefficient of friction on the ground. So e even though if you look at them on the upper durability test with the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, speaking of, I mean, the Dremel does start to bite through that drag guard. However, it is really thick of a drag guard. And like I said, its coefficient of friction is a lot smaller. So if you're someone that really drags your toe off of the back foot, your trailing foot, I think because of the nature of that dragging, you're not gonna wear these down as fast as some other shoes sliding just because the engineering of them is just so good for airflow. And so for the first category in universal rating system, containment, I actually am gonna give these a four out of five. At number one, I mean, I haven't talked about it yet, but it's the external outrigger heel counter it actually integrates underneath of it with the shank in the midsole so it gives the whole shoe one big exoskeleton around your foot and that coupled with this really strategic padding around the ankle collar and Kager's triangle as well as around your sinus tarsi coupled with the compression around the tongue I, it, honestly I think the one thing that would go in terms of containment on these would just be the shoelace eyelet everything else is really made to hold you into that shoe and getting into the midsole teardown this is a full bed of dual density light strike it's not like some shoes where the dual density foam is just in one area of the shoe. It actually spans the entire bed, which really is nice. That is a more premium upgrade. Now, the one thing I noticed, I did put it under the microscope. I didn't see too big of a difference between the densities of Light Strike on the top and on the bottom. And the top seems a little bit less dense than on the bottom, which would make sense. A little more forgiveness to your foot, more durability to the midsole foam as a whole. However, you do have that exoskeleton, as you can see, that kind of integrates underneath of it. Now, that wraps around the whole shoe going east to west. I mean, not so much north to south or anterior posterior. So the front part of the shoe that light strike is going to be a little bit more exposed on these. However, in terms of kind of holding up the light strike as a whole, I would say this exoskeleton does do a lot better of a job in maintaining the durability of the light strike than some other light strike product shoes, namely the Ubersonic 4. And if you look at this midsole foam on the bounce height test, got an average of 30.5 centimeters on that bounce height. Honestly, pretty similar to some other light strike shoes recently, the Dawn Issue 4. Got 31 centimeters on average. You know, it's not super elite like double stack zoom air is, 
but for how light the product is, it's still pretty decent. And backing up that bounce height test, you look at these on the accelerometer measuring the magnitude of my serve. Of course, the SD card got corrupted, so I actually don't have video of it, but I do have the screen recording of the accelerometer. Now, comparing these to the gel resolution nine, the impulse just isn't as high getting up off the ground, but the shock coming back down on the ground isn't as bad either. But this really tells me as if you're someone that has a lot of leg strength to begin with, these are a super easy shoe to propulse up off the ground, and they're gonna give you a really light footprint when you come down for that second shot. And so that brings me to the second and third piece of the universal rating system, bounce and shock absorption. Now, I am gonna give them a three for both bounce and shock absorption. Like I said, they are pretty easy to get up off the ground. They are very nimble shoes underfoot. They're very bottom light shoes. However, like I said, light strike over time is gonna to start to bottom. Even with the exoskeleton, like I said, is very good. And you are getting a little bit of a better stack of light strike underneath of your arch. I still just think over time, both of those are gonna to start to wane. And that's why they didn't get into that elite territory. But getting into the outsole tread and, and probably one of the best parts of the Cybersonics, it is just this whole hodgepodge of different herringbone structures. It's like a Picasso painting of herringbone. As you can see, you get really flat herringbone right underneath the ball of the foot for more efficient sliding, as well as on the lateral side of the heel. And you also get really chunky, wide-spaced herringbone on the lateral forefoot and medial heel to really dig into the court. I noticed with these, if you wanted to slide, you could. If you wanted to grab traction, you could as well. And I think the thing that really clued me into how good it was is I never noticed the tread. When I really wanted to stop, I stopped. When I wanted to slide, I just slid. There wasn't really any hiccups to the tread that I noticed. And I wasn't having to think about the footwork on these. So I think the biggest compliment I can give the outsole tread is that you kind of just don't notice it. It becomes more like an extension of your leg. And so with that being said, that brings me to the Cybersonic speed ratio. Remember that is bounce over weight in ounces. Now these come in at a 2.34, which is pretty decent for how light this shoe is and just for a tennis shoe in general. I think really where these shine the most is their ability to get up off the ground and to get going so quick. So the launch on these, even though the light strike doesn't have a crazy bounce to them, they're just so easy to move that, you know, at least on the universal rating system, I had to give them a five. And on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, not even a millimeter of damage on a three millimeter tread depth. This tread is not going anywhere anytime soon, even if you are a heavy slider on these. So on the universal rating system for durability, I'm gonna give these a four out of five. Honestly, it's the shoelace eyelets, again, that really the only thing that take a point off of these in terms of durability. I don't see any really huge points of failure on these besides those. And getting into the fit of the Cybersonics, these kind of remind me of Harry Houdini because they do look really streamlined and really narrow. However, a narrow, medium, or wide foot can go true to size. I'm a 2E. I went true to size on these and I had no problems whatsoever, no cramping, really no break-in whatsoever. I'd say if you are somebody that is an ankle sprainer, remember these are a very streamlined shoe, so you might want to look somewhere else. They aren't bad by any means. It's just they are a very streamlined shoe meant for very streamlined footwork. And I will say if you're somebody with heel pain, ball of foot pain, I probably would be throwing an orthotic in these just to preserve that light strike. I'll leave some in the description that I like the best for these. However, given the profile of them, how light they are, somebody that has really shock inducing injuries, shin splints, things like that, the shoe is so easy to move around and with an orthotic in there. I, I do think for those kind of players, if you're still looking for speed, these are a pretty good pickup. And so for comfort and support on the universal rating system, both of these are gonna get a four out of five for me. I think in terms of comfort, like I said, out of the box, they're great. The durability over the long run, the light strike, same thing. And for support, that exoskeleton is really nice. They do have a nice stack of foam under the arch of the shoe. But once again, that one point taken off just because of the durability of the light strike. Like I said, you can't augment that with an orthotic. And getting into the all important playability of the Adidas Cybersonic, and honestly, the biggest three reasons why you'd wanna buy them, they are so easy to move around in. I will say they are a little bit more of an advanced player shoe nope. because the forefoot of them isn't as wide as some other shoes. And I don't mean wide in terms of fit. I mean, in terms of wide, in terms of the flange and in terms of the profile down there. So I would say if you want side to side speed, you have to have more elite level footwork because they don't do the work for you. They get out of your way enough and they act like an extension of your leg and foot enough to give you that really great launch, really great movement. As long as you're someone that brings that advanced level footwork to the table. I will say if you're a serve and volley or high level doubles player, there is not a better shoe out there to get you from the baseline to the net or back again, right? Trying to get up for an overhead really quick or just making really quick split stepping movements. 
These are the best shoes out there. So if you're someone in that category, I think these are an easy pickup. However, if you are someone that is trying to track down a lot of balls, really retrieving a lot, just really predicate nice yourself on a ton of speed. Like I said, because they are so lightly underneath of them, you can pretty much track down any ball in these shoes. They spend more time in the air than they do on the ground. They're just a great split stepping shoe. So easy to stay up on the balls of your foot. Your feet just don't get tired when you're bouncing up and down constantly on them. I really like that about them. I will say the biggest three reasons why you want to buy them though, is if you're looking for an upgrade to the Ubersonic 2, these are a genuine upgrade to that shoe. I know a ton of people were still looking for the Ubersonic 2s after the 3s and 4s came out, and they are a genuine upgrade to that shoe. Number two is if you're someone that wants an upgrade to the Nike Vapor 9, 9.510, or even Pro, these are a terrific upgrade to those shoes too. And number three, if you're someone that plays outdoor basketball that wants a really lightweight shoe for an asphalt court, but also a shoe that's easy to get a jump shot off in and a shoe that's not gonna wear down super quick like some other lightweight basketball shoes are. So I'd say for those three people, those are the best. And if you're somebody with really advanced footwork looking for a really fast shoe out there, you just have to be a player that can extract the playability out of these and they'll really give you something back in return. But the Cybersonic more than I think any other tennis shoe this year, I'd love to hear your opinions. Are you looking to go for these, especially at the price point, or you pass and go with something else. Like I said, I do think these do have some things that make them worth it for the right player. I'd just like to know if you think you are that right player for them. So let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see the other sibling to the Adidas Cybersonic, the Adidas Soul Match Control going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.